in this tutorial we're going to look at um, alternative layouts in InDesign and what we can do with those and, and how it really works and, and works well. So here I have a cookbook that uh, we designed, uh, designed with another designer, Nicole Zalba, uh, great photographer, Zalba uh, designed uh, this book initially. I went back in and fine-tuned. If you want to go check her out, ZalbaMariePhotography.com or sorry, NicoleZalba.com, a phenomenal photographer. And mainly what I just want to show you is alternative layouts. So we have this cookbook here that was an 8x8. But what somebody might ask you is like, well, I like the 8x8 and it's already laid out. It looks great. What we want to do is like, well, what if it was a different dimension? What if we could try this as a different layout? And what you might do is you might open this up again in a different document and save it and say, okay, this is the new dimensions. You go to your file document setup and and you put in some new dimensions which is totally fine but in this situation we could actually do it right here now realistically this is a 24 page book so there's a lot going on so I probably would set it up in another document but I wanted to show you here because I think it'll give us a good idea what I can do is say yes I want to create an alternative layout so I can write uh, I can click on any page and create alternative layout so there it is right there create alternative layout uh, alternate, that's an alternative, my apologies, alternate layout. And I can say, okay, what's this going to be? This is one's going to be, uh, let's say it's going to be a 12 by 10. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to say it's going to be 12 wide by 10 high. Uh, and it's going to be from the source, which asks them here, the name is custom D. And the width is going to be 12 by 10. So I have the name of it, I have where it's coming from, the content where it's coming from, and I have my new dimensions. And I'm just going to say, okay. So what happens here in my panel is I'm going to have another alternate layout right here with the new dimensions. So as I can see at the very top, I'm on page one. And on page one, I'm going to scroll down to page 24. And what I should see at the end of page 24 is the new beginning of page one. It kind of scrolls down and it comes back. And so on page 24, I'll double click there. It'll take me to page one and look here. I have my new layout of my new 12 by 10. So that layout is there, the 12 by 10 layout. So now what I could do here is create that alternate layout. Now, obviously I'm not gonna go through and actually create an alternate, an alternate layout. I'm just gonna show you that yes, you can do everything right in here in one document, have two different layouts and say, okay, and now you have your content that's already there. You have everything there. You have your guides and grids that you've used before that maybe you wanna change up. So look what happened here as well. I have a new master page that automatically showed up as well as master B and the 12 by 10. And now I could change up anything I want here. I could fix up my patterns and do whatever I want. So here I have a great way to play around with my um, alternate layout. If I click on the little arrow here, I have a couple little arrows next to my custom V or my first initial one or he or my 12 by 10, my new alternate layout. I could split the window to compare layouts. And so now that what that does, I could click on this window and see what's going on with the uh, normal 8 by 8 or I click on this window and I can see what's going on with my new 12 by 18. OK, now, obviously, if I scroll up enough, I'll see the 8 by 8 here, 8 by 8 here. If I scroll down enough, I'll see the 12 by 18 at the bottom. But this gives me a good idea on how I can take a look at the differences and kind of play around there, which is a pretty cool way to do. I'm going to unsplit the window, go back to just one. I happen to be on page one of my first, or I could be on page one of my second layout. And that's all. I just wanted to show you that. But there's something more to this. I'm just going to close this now. And I want to show you that you can play around with many multiple pages inside of your um, your document. So I'm just going to make a new document and I'm just going to make a business card. Let's start off with the business card. So I'm just going to go here, wait for this to open up, go to my inches, say my business card. I know is a three and a half by two. That's what I want to do. No facing pages. Perfect. And I'm just going to create it. There's my business card. Now, I'm not actually going to play around with anything here, but if I did, I could play around with the business card. But watch what else I can do. I'm going to add a new page. And in that new page, I say, well, it's another three and a half by two. But I say, you know what? I want to do a whole business collateral in InDesign. I want a three and a half by two. For the business card, I want an eight and a half by 11 for the letterhead, and I want a four and an eight by nine and a half for the envelope. Okay, so what I can do here is click on this page, and I'm gonna click on this tool here. The page tool will allow me to change the dimensions of an individual page inside one document. So there it is right there, I click on that, and on my control panel, I can say, I want this to be eight and a half by 11, and look what happens. 
I have a separate size page inside one document where the initial one is 3.5 by 2, this one's 8.5 by 11, and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to click on any one, I'll say make a new page, and look, it makes a new business card size 3.5 by 2, and that's fine. With my page tool, once again, I'm just going to click on that, my page, page 3, and I'm going to say this one's going to be 4.125 by 9.5, and, and that's my envelope size. Like, oh, wait a second, the envelope doesn't go that way, it goes this way. So now I can change the orientation, I have my custom sizes, I can do whatever I want. So here, just by looking at this, I have my full uh, collateral set up. I have a business card, I have a letterhead, I have an envelope. Perfect. Now if I laid this out in a certain way, it's like, wow, I really like this, looks great, but you know what? I want to make an alternate layout to this. That's totally fine. I could click on my drop down arrow, create an alternate layout, and this one's just going to be, it says business card V, uh, it's going to take from business card H, and look, it already kind of changes it for me. It says, well, since your current one is already three and a half by two, why don't I change this to two by three and a half? I was like, yeah, that's fine, that works out. So I'm just gonna say, okay. But what it did, it didn't take all three as um, this one change and this one. It just gave me three versions of a three and a half by two. Now, in this case, two by three and a half. So what I could do is go back in and click on this with my page tool and make it eight and a half by 11. Order. But let's just pretend, even just for now, I just wanted a bunch of different business card sizes here to change that. So now, number one, we can obviously take the page tool and make different size pages inside one document, and we can still have alternative, alternate layouts here as well. So just to show you how you can play around with alternate layouts really quickly inside one text document and really play around, once again, if you have many, many pages you're working with, maybe you do want to make two separate documents or many separate documents to show different layouts. But if you have something simple like this and you want to show a couple different versions of a business card, different sizes, different orientations, same with the letterhead or envelope, you can do it all inside of one document very easily and you could actually export as one PDF instead of making many PDFs. Uh, everything could be in one PDF. So just to show you that, alternate layouts.